if I look over here at my outliner, I can see that I've got my character geometry. I've got my skeleton with the root control. It's not called skeleton, it's called root joint. So I'm going to put it inside of a group node that I will call my skeleton group. Then I've got the upper body controls, but they're not called that. They're called root control. So I'm going to put that in a group and I will call this one upper body CTL GRP. Here are my two reverse skeletons. I will group them together and call this my reverse JTS GRP. And then I've got my left and right foot controls, which again I will group together and let's call this one reverse feet group. I could go even further. I've got this skeleton group and this reverse joints group. Maybe I will group them together and we will just call this one joints group. And then we'll take these and group them together and call them controls group. So now my outliner looks a lot cleaner. If I go in here, I can see my main skeleton and my reverse joints. I'm going to make sure that this is entirely on the skeleton layer, just so that that can be nice and clean. And then in here, I've got all of my controls. So with these groups all put together, again, upper body, reverse joints. That looks really good. So with all of that put together, I'm going to make one last control that will allow me to scale the character to fit a scene and allow it to face in the other direction as needed. This control is called a placement control and most people make it out of a circle. You could also use a four arrow curve if you were feeling super fancy. I'm going to do a circle, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this up uh, I like to use my top view and go out to just about where the character's hands are so that people know how wide this character can be. You could be smaller, you could be bigger. It's all relative. I'm also going to give this circle a lot more sections. Maybe I'll go up to like 30 or 40. 30 sounds really nice. Let's type in 30. When I do that, what happens is I get a lot more control vertices. So I'm going to take these control vertices in the front and just kind of squeeze them together. Move them a little bit forward. Maybe I'll squeeze these in a little too. And that makes my curve into kind of like an arrow shape. And that's going to help the animator figure out which way is forward for this character. Which I know sounds stupid, but trust me, it's helpful. So this circle I am going to take and rename. This is going to become my placement CTL. I'm going to make sure that I run freeze transformations so that it is nice and clean and zeroed out. And I also like deleting my history so that it has no other nodes coming in. By the way, if your character had a name, you would probably put that right here. You would say name placement control but my character doesn't. It's just a little tube man. So with the placement control, I'm going to take my controls group and make it the child of placement. Then I'll take my joints group and make that the child of placement too. I am not going to make the character geometry the child of placement, just the joints and the controls. And now the placement control, this thing right here at the bottom of the feet, will allow me to scale the character up and down, rotate so that it's facing in all different directions, this way, this way, and also move so that it could start not at the origin. So the placement control is super duper useful. I'm going to stick it on my center layer so that it turns nice and bright and yellow. And then I will take the placement control and the geometry and group them together. This is what you would call your character's name group. So again, organization is really important. Here is my placement control. 
I will open that up. Here are all of my controls. The upper body, that's the first part we did, and then the reverse feet. Here are the joints. In the joints I've got my skeleton group, which is the root joint and all of the joints underneath it, and then my reverse joints group, which is the right and left reverse heels. They're just parents. This is a parent-child relationship between the placement control and everybody else. And before you do that, you want to make sure that you have frozen your transformations and deleted your history. My very, very last step is to come back into my select by name. And again, I will search for that GRP that I'm using for all of my groups. And I'm going to make sure that all of the group nodes are locked and hidden. And that should allow me to have no access to my group nodes. My animators will have to do everything through my control curves. And that makes me super happy. At this point, the rig is done. It is going to be great for really basic animations. It is not a complex rig, but it should get you through basic things like walking and jumping. So good luck. I hope that went really well for you, and I will talk to you soon.